Greetings, my name is Mike and welcome to the video. Sorry it's been so long, I know it's just been really hectic, but I hope everyone is doing well and keeping safe during these tough times. Today I'm really excited to show off something that has been released into a stable channel now, which is called Activity Contracts. This is a nice convenient way to start activities for result and then get that re result back in a nice sort of type safe fashion. It removes a lot of ugly code and makes stuff a lot neater. So I'm really keen to show it off and hope you will appreciate it. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually show you my little demo app. All this code is on my GitHub, by the way, you can find a link below to that. So don't worry about following every little detail here. But in my sample app, I'm going to go to the activity contract section. And then I just have two samples that I'm going to be going through. One is requesting permissions, which has notoriously been very tedious but it's a lot easier now. And then how you can actually write custom contracts, which is also nice and easy. So what I'm gonna do is start by showing off the permissions example, which is gonna use a pre-built contract that comes with the library. So when I click permissions, it's just gonna ask me, do I want to allow a camera permission? If I press deny, we update the text view over here to say it was denied. Likewise, if we grant it, then we just say it was granted, pretty straightforward. If we request it more times, it just doesn't do anything because it's already been granted and we can just carry on like normal. Pretty straightforward, nothing too exciting in the app here, but I think the interesting stuff happens in the code, hopefully. So if we have a look at my click listener over here for the button, which is this over here, of course we have to check if we are running Marshmallow or higher because that's when runtime permissions were introduced. Then we have to check this self permission thing, which means that was the permission already granted? If it was, then we can just proceed like normal. Otherwise, we have to go and actually request the permissions. We have to build an array of permissions that we want and then give it a magical request code, which is stored up here just to some magic number. Then we have to override on permission result and check if the request code is the one we're looking for. And then we go and sort of process it, right? I just passed to my view model here a Boolean where if it was granted or not. And this should actually be first or null because <clears throat> the grant results array can be empty in some circumstances, which is great. So we, we don't want to cause crashes by doing that. So this code is not too much to be honest, but it is tedious and it is quite annoying to go and implement all the time. So I'm going to show you how activity contracts can actually reduce a lot of this code. So let's go and implement activity contracts, shall we? But the first thing you need to do is you need to go and use version 1.2 of the activity KTX library because that's when it was released into stable. So I'm going to change the version I'm using to the correct one and just sync quickly. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. There we go. Now I'm just going to start by creating a new field request permission and you initialize it to the value of what the result of calling register for activity result. This is a new function. This has two parameters with an optional third, but we're not going to worry about that. The first one is the actual contract that you're going to be using. So for permissions, you can just go and say request permission, basically instantiating that object. And the second permission is the second parameter is a callback. You're going to get this callback when the activity finishes and then you'll get back the result from that activity. You'll notice over here, it is coming back as a Boolean right, which is quite nice because it just says, was the permission granted, true or false? Nice and easy to use instead of having to use this grant results array thing, which is an integer, which then you have to go and check and it's not fun to work with. So we just get back a Boolean, whoops, say, oh, come on, saying was it granted or not. And all I'm going to do here is just delegate that to the view model, say on permission result with that value we get back. Right. And what this does is it replaces that custom or well, the method that we had to override down here, which is the permission result method. So I can just delete it now because we don't need it, which is nice and awesome. And also over here where we actually have the click listener to start the permission activity or to do the permission check rather. This also gets simplified greatly because we can just use that contract that we have above request permission dot launch. It has an input, which is, of course, just the permission that you want to request. So I'm going to just say manifest.permission.camera. And that's all you need to do to actually request permissions. 
the, the contract itself will go and handle a case where the permission is already granted and things like that. So you don't need to worry about it. And I can just delete all that other code that we had in there. And finally, the magic constant over there also gets to disappear because the contracts take care of all those request codes for us. Now, that is pretty much how it looks when you want to request permissions, which is a lot neater than before. I mean, we've already de deleted a fair amount of code. And I'll just show you my view model, by the way. There's nothing in here to do with contracts, so don't worry about that. But I have this method on permission result, which gets the Boolean back. And then I'm just updating a live data depending on when it was granted or not. Right, pretty straightforward. I'm not going to look in here too much because, again, there's no uh, contract stuff happening there. If I go and run this app now, we should see exactly the same behavior because <laughs> that's expected. Right, if I go back here now, you'll see that we actually go and request permission, which is correct. If I say deny, it says it was denied. Again, allow, it was granted. And future clicks don't bring up anything because it's been granted. Pretty nice. Same behavior in the app, which is kind of boring, but the code is a lot neater now. We just have this one little callback, Lambda, and you can handle the, the case in there. You don't have to get an intent back now and parse the intent to get extras out of it. And you don't have to use this grant array thing. So it's really a lot neater to work with. And likewise, especially launching the request, you don't have to do all those other checks anymore. You don't have to check the API level or anything like that. So it's a lot simpler and I'm really keen to start using this. So that's all I wanted to show for the permission side. What I want to do now is quickly show how you can write custom contracts for your own activities, right? A, a contract basically has an input type and an output type, as you saw with permissions, the input is just a string for what permission you want to request. And the output is a Boolean, was it granted yes or no? So you can choose any input type and output type you want. You can make it uh, primitives or you can make it like custom classes or anything like that. So let's go and have a look. I'll just again show you in the app the screen we're going to be looking at. It's now going to be this other button underneath. The custom contracts one. This is just going to be like a really silly little version of a payment screen or something. We have the name of the user and then the amount that you want to pay. These two are inputs to the activity, right? I'm giving them a string extras, the name of the person and the amount as an int. And the result is going to come back as a class which has a Boolean successful and a message as well. So if I click success, we finish that activity and we get back the result object over here. And I'll show you the code now. Likewise, if we press error, we get back an error result saying it success is false. And then with a message like that, right? If I have a look in the code here where I'm starting this activity, I'm just creating an intent and I'm creating a payment request basically with the recipient name and the amount. Then we're using our good old start activity for result with the magic request code. And you'll notice now that it's actually been deprecated with this new version of the activity library. And of course we override on activity result as well, check if the request code is what we are expecting and then delegate to the view model. But we have to before, but before we do that, we have to pass the result and let's take a look at how that happens, shall we? In my payment activity, which is this one over here, where we have the two fields and the buttons, I just have some static methods over here, one to create the intent and then one to parse the result um, that comes back. Well, I don't know if you need to see anything else here. We just get the, the extras, the name of the user and the amount from the intent. And then we just show it on the screen. And we add two listeners for the success. We will set the result to OK and finish with a successful message. And likewise for error, we will set the result to something else and then with an error message. Right, pretty straightforward. And let's have a look at how we can actually convert this to use contracts. And a lot of the logic inside this activity, the payment one will stay the same, but it's the calling activity that will actually become a bit uh, neater. So what I'm going to do is create an inner class. I'm not sure what the best practice is, by the way, for creating contracts, but I think an inner class kind of makes sense. So I'm just going to call it contract because it's again, an inner class. It doesn't need to be too specific. And over here, you go and extend the activity result, result contract, that one. 
and you'll notice it has two type parameters. One is the input type, one is the output type. Pretty straightforward. For me, the input type is going to be this object below, a payment. It's the object that has the name and the amount. And the output type is going to be a transaction result like that. You can again see those objects at the bottom there. Inside here, there's two methods to go and implement, which is very similar to what to the static ones that I had before. So I'm literally just going to copy paste as any good developer knows how to. <laughs> and same for the parsing of the result part. Right, and um, we just have uh, different names over here to change. When you copy paste, be sure to, to actually go and look at what you've pasted because otherwise you're going to have a tough time. Then I can go and get rid of that other duplicate that we had over there. Right, so when you specify a contract, you must just override two methods as well. One to create the actual intent where you get your input type over here. And that's when you will convert it to the intent and put the necessary extras inside. Similarly, parse result will handle the result coming back and parsing it into a useful object over here, right? You get the intent back and then you just convert it into that result object. Pretty nice. And all this logic is now isolated inside this activity itself. So you don't have to know about all these extras from calling classes. Otherwise, the activity pretty much stays the same, to be honest. We still need to get the extras from the intent, and we still set the result and finish in the same fashion. Now, the interesting part is going to be cleaning up the calling class, and the code will look very similar to what we did for permissions. So I'm just going to create a new field, call it custom contract, very good names. And again, we say register for activity result, and instantiate that new contract object we wrote. So it's going to be payment activity.contract. Again, we'll have a callback as well for when the activity finishes. And now you'll notice in the Lambda though, the callback, we have a different type, which is of course the, the output type that we specified in the contract, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to call it result and again, delegate to the view model so it can go and update the view accordingly. Again, nothing exciting in the view model with regard to permission, uh, with regard to contracts. So I'm not going to show it again. But now, once again, when we have the click listener for that, uh, for that button, we can just use the contract and we say launch. And the parameter for launch is now instead of the string for permissions, it's now our input object, which makes sense. So I'm just going to go and instantiate that payment object. And we had two names, or two parameters, the one is the the person who you're paying, and the other one was the amount. Right, pretty straightforward and a lot easier to read. Now I can also delete that other method and we are good to go. And that's that constant as well. Now, just by doing these two contracts, a lot of code has been removed from this activity, which I appreciate because less code means less maintenance and less bugs. So I'm really happy with, with this contract stuff, how, how, how simple it actually makes it. Let's go and just rebuild this and make sure it still works as expected. All right, go to our custom contract section. And there we go, we get the name and the amount that we passed in. If I end with success, I'll maybe just show that view model code actually. Right, so when I click, when I click the success button, what it's doing, it's coming into this lambda over here with the result that we passed. And in the view model, I'm just updating this text view. Um, oh boy, that's a bit hard to read on here. Sorry. But anyway, so <laughs> I'm updating, I think this is a bit better, the texts to use the boolean that we got back and the, the message itself as well. So if we click on the error one, we see that now it's false and we get a different message coming back. And that is pretty much all I wanted to show off for contracts. Oh, what I didn't show off yet is the, the predefined one. So if I go to the request permission contract, I want to just import it as well, so it's a bit neater. But if we go to that, right, go to the definition, you can see that this is part of the Android X library, the activity library. And we have a whole lot of predefined contracts in here that you can use. So go through this and see if there's something that you need. But for example, we had the request permission one. And there's a whole lot of other interesting ones as well, like to take a picture, to take a video, to pick a contact, which I really appreciate because contact picking is a bit of a mission as well. And then there's other more advanced ones like opening a document or creating a document as well. 
So all these contracts have already been defined for you and you get them for free when you when you pull in the latest activity library. So have a look at those before going and writing your own that might exist already. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to show off. Um, I, th I think I've gone through all the important stuff for working with contracts. It is really nice, it is really convenient, it removes a lot of code. Maybe I can see here how much I actually did remove by viewing the diff. <clears throat> so beforehand we had 57 lines and now we have only 36. Um, especially thanks to removing all this permission stuff. <laughs> so I'm really keen to again actually go and implement this in my apps and at work and hopefully you are too. Just a side note, if you are using Java for some reason, you don't have Kotlin, this still works exactly the same. All these methods are, are actually written in Java themselves, so you have access to them as well. Might be a bit longer in Java, but it'll still work, don't worry about it. Yeah, that's that's all I wanted to show off. GitHub link for this is all below, so check it out if you if you want to see something more. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and hope to see you in the next one. Cheers for now.